Good morning, yogis. I'm coming to you today from Morgantown, Indiana, on this beautiful dock on this lake with this wonderful setting out here in an outdoor practice. Today is going to be a one hour uh, level two to three uh, vinyasa class. I'm going to be queuing level two and level three um, things if you want to join, if you're feeling it today, if you want to try something new, if you want to stop and look up and see what I'm doing and discover something new. Maybe you are a level two, three already and you want to power through, go for it. It's not necessarily things you don't know because it's going to be typical vinyasa sun salutes at some point. It's going to be a little bit more about endurance. We're going to go a little bit stronger, a little bit longer. So this is going to be a strength as well. Always, at any time, if you want to take a break, take a break, take a child's pose, take a down dog, take a couple of breaths. Even 30 seconds is enough to rejuvenate if you want to continue on again. So uh, do not hurt yourself. That's the one, number one rule in yoga. Go to your ledge, go a little beyond your ledge. Maybe if you're not quite feeling it today, you hold back a little bit and join up, re-watch this video next time and step your game up, whatever feels good for you. Your practice is always yours. There's no perfection in yoga. It's called a yoga practice. So let's begin this morning in child's pose, everyone. So we're on our hands and knees. Toes touching, big toes touching, knees as wide as the mat. Sink your hips back, and we'll just do a little bit of big joint warm-up here before we get into a larger practice. Stretching is very important before we get really moving. So dropping your chest down between your legs, reaching your hands forward. Maybe your forehead is on the earth. Perhaps you set an intention for the class. Connect with Mother Earth. Start your ujjayi breath, breathing in and out of the nose quite deeply. And on your exhale, just sink that rib cage between your legs and just drop lower. Starting to have a more conscious breath, in and out of the nose, building some heat. If your forehead is on the earth, Maybe you roll your head side to side and stimulate your third eye, your intuition, your all-knowing. If your forehead doesn't quite touch the earth, you can always stack your fists like I'm demonstrating so that you do feel that connection. And let's all extend our arms. We're still in child's pose. Extend our arms straight out. Elbows off the earth, forearms off the earth and push your hips back. Maybe you come up on your fingertips like you have a ball under the palms of your hands and push your fingertips into the earth so that it sinks your hips back. You're going to feel more of a stretch on the underarms, the rib cage, and from here let's march off to the right staying nice and low. So now your rib cage is lied, lying a little bit more on that right thigh. Maybe you can drag that left fingertips, that left hand, just a little bit further than you think. Feel that stretch all the way from your hip. Left hip up the left side body, up the left arm. And breathe. Let's march back towards the center. Off to the other side, same thing. Off to the left side, maybe the right hand goes a little further than you think. Drop that right shoulder. Nice stretch. Fingertips in the right hand, crawl just a little further, feel that long, long stretch. March back to the center, off to the left. Second time, drop that left shoulder, drop it. Back to the center, off to the left. Right hand is nice and long, drop the shoulder. And back to the center. Let's bring the fingertips onto the mat one more time, pushing the hips straight back, really opening the armpits, really opening the side rib cage, and coming up to all fours. Bringing the knees under the hips, hands under the shoulders, tops of the feet down if you like. Some lineages have you in uh, tabletop with your toes curled under. That's totally fine. It's up to you. I like to feel the top of my feet down. I like to have more contact with the earth. We'll do a couple of cat cows here. So inhale, chin and chest up. Exhale round, pushing the earth away, keeping your shoulder blades spread. Inhale, drop the belly. Exhale round. Inhale. 
Exhale round. Inhale. Exhale round. Inhale. Exhale, tuck your tail, tuck your chin. Let's come to a neutral spine here. Let's bring the right shoulder and the right hip close. Maybe you even look to the right. Stretching that left side rib cage. Back to the other side. This is more lateral. Left shoulder, left hip getting close. Looking to the left. Arms are strong and straight. You're still pushing the earth away. Fingers spread nice and wide. Palms flat on the floor. Back to the right. You feel that stretch. Warming up the back, back to the left. Very good, come to center. Let's do some spinal balance here and just strength, uh, warm up the back strength here. Right hand forward like you're shaking someone's hand, left foot back, flexed, nice and strong. Belly's engaged and you reach. Take a couple of breaths, really lift that left leg a little higher, then release. Left hand forward, right foot back. Nice and strong. Palm to the midline. Left and right. Brain working together. Lift that right leg up a little higher and release. Back to the right side and extend. Right hand, left leg. Let's bend that left leg, reach back, grab your ankle, your foot, kicking that foot back. Engage that kneecap and the thigh on the left leg. Shoulder blade on the, on the spine, opening your chest. Kicking, kicking, kicking with control. We're gonna release, left hand stays up, drop the left foot, I'm sorry, right hand stays up, drop the left foot. Now tuck your toes under, push your heel back, and bring that right hand to the sky. Looking up. Right hand down, same sequence, other side, left hand forward, right leg back. Flexed foot. A flexed foot on that leg, of course you know, keeps that leg nice and strong. Your advanced yogis, you know this. Just giving you tips to help a remind. Now we bend that leg, grab your heel, kicking back. This is your heart chakra side, open that heart to the side. Stretch, kicking that foot back, pull that shoulder blade onto the spine. With control, hand forward, left or right leg down, toes curled under, kicking the heel back. Stretch that calf, left hand to the side, twist. And left hand down to the earth, knee down to the earth, just sink back, child's pose, knees right under the rib cage. Stretch back, open that low back, give it a break from that. Extensions we were doing, come back up to all fours. Right hand forward, spinal balance once again. This is the yin and yang, the left and right, the masculine, feminine, hot and cold. We're gonna curl and touch the hand to the knee and extend. Curl and round, touch, extend, curl and round. Extend, right hand down, cross that left leg over the right, curl the toes under once again, kicking your heel back. Can you look back at that foot over your right shoulder? Feel that stretch up the right rib, uh, waist. Staying exactly there, drop that left knee down. So now your legs are sort of crossed, top of the foot down, separate your ankles, leave your hands where they are and just sink your hips back. Oh, I love that. A great diagonal stretch. Long stretch up the left side. Inhale forward, unwind the legs. Other side, left hand, right foot, kicking back. Nice and strong, we're gonna curl and round and touch the knee. One, extend, two, extend, three. Extend with control. Left hand comes down, right leg crosses over, all the way over. Curl the toes under. Push the heel back, look over your left shoulder. Make that left side of your rib cage small and the right side of the rib cage long. 
and bend that knee, drop it down like you're crossing legs, top of the foot down, sinking back. Leave your hands where they are so you get a nice stretch up the right side. You feel that diagonal stretch in the hips. We're warming up the hips here all the way around, preparing for our flow section. Wonderful. It's a great way to aid in digestion and get your digestion going, or it's a great diagonal hip stretch for after long car rides or sitting for a long time, airplanes. Inhale forward, unwrap. Big toes touching, knees very, very wide. Sink back, child's pose. Just a quick one, push the earth away. Come back to all fours. Tabletop position, knees under the hips, hands under the shoulders. We'll start there. But now take your hands and do ha two handprints forward. So you're in a little bit of a, we're going into a bowing puppy here. So you sink your hips back. It's kind of like a child's pose, but we're gonna come forward and make a small flow here. Coming forward, chin and chest down, elbows very close, tail is up. You see that position? So you're extending the spine, extending the neck, the cerebral spine, elbows very close, drop the belly down, come up to your small cobra, exhale back to child's pose. That's your flow. Inhale forward, exhale down, tail up, inhale into cobra, exhale to child's pose. Continue on at your own pace if you want to pause or move slowly, more slowly, breathe more slowly, that's up to you. Exhale back to child's pose. If you're following me, inhale forward, chin and chest down, elbows close to this body. Small cobra. Exhale back. One more round. Coming forward. Exhale back to child's pose. Now we're going to come forward and keep the front side of the body down on the earth. So set yourself up for a sphinx. I'm going to show you something about sphinx to help you maybe get a further extension than you're, than you're used to. You just want to make sure your elbows are under your shoulders and a lot of people can't see that. So if your elbows are wide, you can take that right hand up and see if you can get the forearm in the palm of your hand. So you pull it in to the palm of your hand. Drop the right hand down, left hand up. See if you can get that forearm or elbow in the palm of your hand. Now your elbows are together. When your elbows are wide, you, you can't possibly push up to a more full extension. So true sphinx is right under the shoulders. You can go nice and high. Big paws on the earth. Isometrically pulling your rib cage and chest forward while your hands come back. Lift the chin up, look over the right shoulder. See if you can see your ankle. Come center, chin up, look over your left shoulder. One more time, chin up to the right, chin up to the left, and come looking forward, sliding the hands under the shoulders. We're going to do a, a small cobra here, chin and chest up on your inhale, exhale down, roll down, inhale, chin and chest up, cobra. Exhale down, you feel the back really warming up and strengthening. Chin and chest up, we're going to stay here, hands off the earth. Cobras do not have hands. <laughs> Shoulder blades very close. Can you really open your heart, open your front, front chest? Lifting the legs off the earth. No prize for this. If you want to leave your legs down, that's fine. It's going to get more and more intense here. So at any point you want to put your legs down, go for it. This is to keep our back nice and strong. Maybe you swing your hands, palms up by your body, back by your legs, shoulder blades close, arms out to the side like wings. Maybe the backs of the hands come higher to the sky. And then forward like you're diving into the pool, dive right into this pond. And drop your hands under your shoulders, legs down. Counter stretch, pull the belly in a nice, sweet round back for a child's pose. Extend forward, hips back. And take a couple of breaths, knees are close. Very good. Let's inhale up onto all fours. Come standing on your knees for camel. 
So our knees are right under our hips, tops of the feet down once again. Let's inhale our hands straight up, pelvis forward. You know how it is, hips stay forward here. Drop the right hand to the right heel. Look back, reach up with the left. Right hand up. Looking up, drop the left hand down to the side. Reaching up. Right hand down. Reaching up. Left hand down. Left hand up. Now here is your camel. If you put your hands on the back, low back, and do your full camel, maybe you bring your fingertips down to your heels. Yogi's choice, whatever your level is. Go into your full camel, both hands back or both hands on the waist. On the low back, pushing the pelvis forward, head back. Breathe. Nice, coming out with gentle love for yourself, hands on the low back. Drop the hips back. Quick little child's pose, chest down, around the back. Counter stretch. Very nice. Let's come back up onto all fours. One of my favorite stretches here before we get into our down dog and putting more weight on our hands, let's stretch our forearms and palms. So taking the left hand, turn the fingertips out and all the way back as far as you can. We're same with the right hand all the way back. Finger, uh, pinkies are almost touching. So your fingers are nicely widely, nice and widely spread. You feel that? It's very real. <laughs> for a lot of people. This is the anti-cell phone, the anti-steering wheel, the anti-grabbing a mouse or a device. I love this. It feels so nice. If you want a little bit more intensity, maybe this is enough for you. Maybe you're already <laughs> screwing up your face. Try and smile for one thing and pull your hips back just gently. You'll find a little bit deeper stretch if that's what you need. Maybe you bring your weight to the left just a little. Back to center. This is slow. Like I said, it's very real. Off to the right. If this is not giving you very much, or if you feel like you really could use some more, or want to try something more, your hands are quite close to one another. Bend your elbows. Bring your weight forward and put your rib cage weight on your elbows. These are advanced level cues. You can come up on your tippy toes. Maybe you put all your weight on your elbows and float like the street dancers. Coming out of this, curl your toes under, bring your knees to touch, ankles to touch, curls, <clears throat> toes curled under. Come up to sitting on your ankles, reaching up. Backs of the fingertips touching, backs of the wrists or hands touching. Begging puppy. Oh, oh. <clears throat> Let's interlace our fingers and make figure eights. Now close your eyes here and tell yourself or determine for yourself which hand is leading. And see if you can lead with the other hand. There you go. Left and right brain cooperation. And release and just throw that to the earth. Let's come to standing at the top of the mat. So this is Pada Hastasana. I'm gonna, we'll do a few rounds of Pada Hastasana, but I'm going to also incorporate this during our flow. So this will give you a good introduction to exactly what that feels like. So we stand basically starting in mountain pose, feet under the hips, heels kicked out just a little bit. That internally rotates our knees. You all know this, hands at your side, chest open, shoulder blades down, reach up, look up. We're gonna drop the right hand down to the side Keeping that left shoulder blade back. Inhale up. Right hand down, or left hand down. Reaching up. And swan dive to the earth on an exhale. Let's bend our knees here and interrupt the sequence. Just to keep our uh, stretching going. It's our first time we've really done like a forward fold. And straighten your legs. And bend your legs. Knees, rather. Straighten your legs. Bend at your knees. Let's straighten the legs. Reverse swan dive up, arms out. Second swan dive. Exhale down. 
Bend the knees. Straighten the legs. Bend the knees. Straighten the legs. Let's reverse one. Dive up. Hands in prayer. Let's do that sequence again, but we're not going to be doing the bending the legs this time. That was just sort of a warm-up. So the full Padahastasana is right hand down. Up. Inhale. Left hand down. Exhale. Inhale up. Swan dive. We do two swan dives. So you reach to the earth. Tuck your chin. Flat back up. Second swan dive down. Reverse swan dive up. Hands down the heart line. That's one sequence. Inhale up. We'll do three of these. Right hand down, exhale. Inhale up. Exhale down. Reach up. Swan dive down. Reverse swan dive. A second swan dive is in order. Exhale. And this stretching that we do, you're really reaching up hands down the heart line and you're really reaching down so let's try our last sequence here right hand down left hand is really high inhale up opposite inhale up swan dive down reverse swan dive we do our second round with the swan dive down exhale flat back arms out reverse swan dive up Beautiful. If you're not already at the top of your mat, let's come to the top of your mat. Hands down the heart line. Find your mountain pose. Take a moment. Close your eyes. Set an intention. And we'll begin our flow sequence. A couple of nice deep breaths. Hear the sounds around you. Feel your feet on the uh, foundation, Mother Earth. Gravity pulling you down, keeping you safe, keeping you attached, keeping you connected. Connected to others you might be practicing with. Connected to nature. And let's slowly open our eyes. Inhale our arms up. Looking up, exhale, flat back down. Inhale, half forward fold. Hands down to the earth, step back with the right foot, with the left foot, top of your plank, down to the earth, small cobra, curling the toes under, exhale to down dog. Let's walk the dog just a little. Further stretching the back side of the body, it's always so tense, every morning we start over again, don't we? Now with the still dog, let's come up on the balls of our feet. Push the earth away, bringing your chest closer to your thighs. Keep that position with your shoulders and chest and drop your heels down. Settle in. Let's try that again. Up on the balls of the feet. Kneecaps engaged, thighs engaged. Push, push, push your hands hard or away from you. Bring that chest closer to your legs and then drop your heels down. Beautiful. Let's inhale forward to plank. Hinge to plank. Exhale back to down dog. One more time, let's inhale to plank. Exhale to dog. Looking between your hands, walk, jump, jump, hop, get your feet up between your hands. Half forward fold, full fold, exhale. Reverse one, dive up. Hands down the heart line. Inhale up, look up. Swan dive down. Half forward fold. Back to full fold, left foot back. Right foot back to plank. Exhale down, chaturanga. Maybe it's time for your first up dog. If you're doing your first up dog, legs are nice and strong and straight to your down dog. Beautiful. Can you inhale that left leg up? Open to the side, so bending the knee for your fire hydrant, dropping the left shoulder down. See if you can see that foot under your right arm. Squaring the hips back to the earth, left foot down. Inhale the right leg up, bend the knee, opening your hips to the side, dropping the right shoulder down. Can you see your foot under that left shoulder? Nice and high with that knee, squaring back to the earth. Let's come to a plank. Hips up to down dog, looking between your hands, walk, jump, get your feet between your hands for your forward fold. 
half forward fold, full fold, reverse one dive up, hands down the heart line. Inhale up, building on, exhale down with a flat back, half forward fold, full fold Utkatasana, jumper step back into your plank, Chaturanga, up dog and down dog. At any time, like I told you, you can take a child's pose or meet in down dog. Just take a couple of breaths. You can always catch up. Let's inhale the right leg up, placing the right foot behind the right wrist. We're going into warrior one. Back foot stance gets a little shorter, 45 degree angle. You know, warrior one, reaching up. Dropping that right hip down. If it rides too much to the right, so drop it down. Keep square to the earth and square to the front of your mat. Exhale the hands down. Stepping back, take your vinyasa. Inhale the left leg up. Swing it behind your left wrist. Smaller stance, 45 degree angles. Warrior one, the other side. Plant yourself. Drop that left hip if necessary. Inhale on your exhale, hands down. Stepping back, take your vinyasa. You can do cobra. You can do up dog, or you can simply go straight to down dog. Yogi's choice. From down dog, look between your hands, walk or jump. Between your hands, half forward fold. Exhale, Lutkatasana. Reverse swan dive up. Hands down the heart line. Inhale up, look up. Fly back down to the earth. Inhale, half. Stepping back or jumping back to your chaturanga. Take your vinyasa. Inhale your left leg up. Place it behind your left wrist. Right foot at 45, warrior one. Left foot forward. Plant yourself. Let's bring our arms down to cactus arms. So our elbows are bent. We're still facing forward. Shoulder blades close. Can you bring your elbows further back, bringing those shoulder blades closer to one another? Take the backs of your hands, tip them to the back of your mat. That might even give you a bit of an arch in the upper back. And then, keeping your shoulders the way they are, the arms where they are, can you reach your fingertips back to the corner of the sky behind you, looking up nice and strongly. Energy in the fingers, energy in the palms, nice and strong. Dropping the left hip if it's rising up. And hands down the heart line, take your vinyasa. Or go right to down dog. Inhale the right leg up. Warrior one, right foot forward. Plant yourself, cactus arms on this side. Shoulder blades closer, bringing the elbows back. Backs of the hands tip back, tipping the upper chest looking up to the sky and reach to the corner of the sky with those fingertips nice and strong, belly engaged. And hands down the heart line. Take your vinyasa. From your down dog, look between your hands, bend your knees, hop, jump, step, hands forward, half forward, fold. Exhale, full forward, fold. Reverse one dive up, hands down the heart line. Another round, reaching up, exhale flat back, down to the earth, step back with the right foot or left foot, or you go straight to your chaturanga. Whatever you want, yogi's choice, and maybe you mix it up. Keep your brain guessing what's next. We're all meeting in down dog. Next, inhale rather, the right leg up. Warrior one, right leg forward up, set your warrior, exhale your hands down to the side, turn the thumbs down, palms to the back, reaching back, interlace your fingers, straighten the arms, chest expansion, nice and high with the chest, maybe you bring the wrists away from the waist, and now lead with your throat chakra, your clavicle, reaching forward, bending forward, a lot of strength and weight in the front foot. Wrists are going high. Drop your head when you get down there. 
If your balance left and right is a little funky, heel toe that front foot to the right. Widen your tracks, your, your uh, stance. Inhale up, release the hands, reach up. Look up, back bend slightly, hands down the heart line. Stepping back, take your vinyasa, or go straight to down dog. Inhale, left leg up. Warrior one, left side forward. Set yourself. Plant yourself. Exhale the hands down. Turn the palms down. Reach behind you. Interlace your fingers, but lead with the other index finger. The awkward side. Play with your awkward side here. Straightening the elbows if you can. Palms touching if you can. Wrists away from the hips. Chin up. Chest up. Lead and lean forward with your chest, your throat chakra. Wrists up. Beautiful. You got it. Let's push weight into that front foot coming up. Dropping the wrists. Release your hands, reaching up. Hands down. Take your vinyasa. Stepping back. Left foot. Exhale the down dog. Look in between your hands. Step up. Bringing the hands forward. Half forward fold. Full forward fold. Reverse swan dive up. Hands down the heart line. We'll sequence now with warrior two involved. But first, let's take a one Padahastasana round before we step back. So hands up, reaching up, looking up. Right hand down. Inhale up, left hand down. Inhale up, swan dive to the earth. Remember, we have two swan dives. Reverse swan dive. Exhale down. We're gonna stay down on this swan dive. Step or hop back to Chaturanga. Take your vinyasa. Let's inhale the right leg up to the sky. Step forward between the hands, warrior two. So we're spinning the left foot down. Turn around here so I can face you, spinning the left foot down. Windmill up to warrior two. Really plant yourself. Knee is always tracking to the pinky toe. Shoulders are above the hips. That's tomorrow's battle, right? And leaning back, that's yesterday's battle. So let's stay centered. What's here and right now, shoulders right over the hips. Nice and strong. Left hand comes forward, windmill down. Step back, take your vinyasa. You have the left leg up. Swing it between your hands, right foot down. Or your two other side. Plant yourself, front knee is nicely bent, back leg is straight and strong, back heel is kicked out. Right hand forward, windmill down, step back. Take your vinyasa. Tail back to down dog. Looking between the hands, bend the knees, hop or jump, step forward. Half forward fold, full forward fold. Tucking the chin even. Reverse swan dive up. Hands down the heart line. Let's take a pot of histosana, reaching up, right hand down. Right hand up, exhale the left hand down. Looking down, reaching up. Both hands up, swan dive to the earth. Reverse swan dive. Second swan dive, we're going to stay down, plant your hands, step or jump back to your chaturanga. Take your vinyasa. Inhale the right foot up, swing it between the hands. Warrior two, right foot forward. Settle yourself, plant yourself, turn the right palm up, reverse warrior. Keeping that front knee bent and come forward to your extended side angle, whatever that means to you. Maybe you reach the earth, looking up over the left shoulder uh, armpit. Inhale back. Exhale, forward extended. Reaching up, I'm gonna go into bird of paradise here. If that's not part of your practice, back to extended side angle. You continue this, 
you can take a child's pose or a down dog, but if you're joining me, left hand on your left hip, we start with a bind here. So you drop your right shoulder nice and low and grab your right wrist with your left hand or your fingertips. Looking down at the earth, step that left foot forward. I'm gonna sort of cheat here so you can see. Putting all the weight in your right, or rather left foot. Right foot comes off the earth. Standing up straight. Dristy point on the earth helps in tremendous amount here. If you're up in your bird, maybe extend that right foot. And slowly release. Right foot down with, content, with control and all the weight on the right foot. Step back, left foot to your extended side angle and summon what you can back up to your warrior two, windmill down, stepping back, plank, chaturanga, and meet you in down dog. Take a moment, take a breath. We'll play with this on the other side. From down dog, left leg up, swing it between the hands for warrior two, dropping the back foot down. I'm on a bit of a wobbly dock here, so it's especially, especially challenging here, but that's what we're here for. Play with the edge of life, right? Shoulders over the hips, warrior two, plant yourself. Sequence is humble warrior, extended side angle, nice and strong. Keeping that front knee bent, come back to Humble Warrior. Yeah. Back to your extended side angle. Reverse Warrior. Third time you choose, if you want to continue or try your bird or try a bind, right hand on the hip if you're binding, drop the left shoulder down and reach under, between, and behind your back. Grab your wrist, grab your fingers, look down. Jump that right foot forward. Take your time. Maybe this is all the further you get, and that is totally great. Put all your weight on the right foot. Find your dristy point, and come to standing. Trying to stand straight up. Straighten that left leg if possible. Come down with control. It's not over. Left foot comes down to the earth, placing all the weight now on the left side. Step back to your warrior two with the bind. Release. Windmill down. Stepping the right foot, left foot back. Take your vinyasa. From here, look between your hands, bend the knees, jump forward, half forward fold, full forward fold, and reverse swan dive up, hands and heart, for a position to the heart, you still with me? Inhale up for a pata hastasana sequence, dropping the right, right hand coming up, dropping the left, left hand coming up, swan dive to the earth. Reverse swan dive, swan dive to the earth, and stay down, step or hop back to your chaturanga, and meet you in down dog. Take a couple of breaths here. We're going to rock forward and go into a fallen triangle and flip back to a... Uh, Basically, it's a, a reverse of the fallen triangle with the right leg. I'll show you here, and I'll instruct as much as I can. So we inhale forward to our plank, back to down dog. Right leg's the active one. Right leg comes up, come to plank, right knee, right elbow. So we're at our plank position. Exhale back to down dog, kicking the right leg up. Right leg forward in the middle plank. Exhale back, kick up. Swinging forward, 
right knee, left elbow. Extend it straight out for fallen triangle. Back foot comes down, reaching the left arm up. Looking up, nice and strong. Left hand down, we're taking that active right foot. Swing like you're doing a side plank on the other side. The right foot comes behind the left. Up on the balls of your feet, Karat Karasana. I believe that's the name of this, it just popped into my head. Don't fact check me on that. Reaching, left hand down, right leg stays active, and it comes down. Extend the left leg up, same sequence. We're rocking forward to plank, left elbow, left knee. Exhale back, kicking up. Left knee to the center, rocking forward. Belly engaged. Exhale back, left knee, right elbow, fall in triangle. Straighten that leg out. Bring the foot high if you can, spin the back foot down, reaching up. Right hand down. We're spinning all the way around. Eric Karas on the other side. Left hand down. Down dog. Come forward to plank. Back to down dog. Take a breath. Take a couple long breaths here. Down dog. Inhale the right foot up. Swing it forward between your hands. Spin the back foot down. Come up to warrior two. We're coming into triangle. Straight into a um, half moon. <laughs> I'm tired too. Warrior two. Nice workout. If everybody's doing great at home, I'm sure, right? Straightening the front leg. Pulling the right hip back slowly squaring the hips towards the front of the mat. They won't get all the way, but we're really trying to extend that straight leg, internally rotate, reaching forward until you wheel down. Left hand to the sky. You can look down, forward or up, whatever feels good for you. Dropping that left shoulder back onto the spine. We're going into a half moon here, so left hand on the hip, bending the front knee. Reach that right hand. Maybe you've got your block ready, or grab a block. Stepping forward just a little bit. Your fingertips are off your pinky toe. Coming up to your half moon. Half moon is a flexed foot, straight leg. Pulling that hip back, that left hip that is. Left hand to the sky. Let's take that left hand down to the earth. So we're dropping our left hip. Now we're in the splits. Dropping that left hip. Hold here for just a moment. Bending down, left leg up. Now take that left knee behind the right knee. Cross and just bend that right knee. Extend the leg up high. Pull the leg down, bend the right knee, squat. Extend up. One more time, squat, extend up, opening the hip, flex the foot back to your half moon, left hand on the hip, bend the right knee, drop that foot down to warrior two, windmill down, take your vinyasa, stepping back, take your cha uh, chaturanga, we'll meet you in down dog. Left side now. Exhale your left leg up. Bring it between the hands. We start in warrior two. Set up your warrior two. We're slowing down a little bit here. Straightening the front leg and pulling that left hip back. Right shoulder still stays nicely back. The hips are going one way, but your top half is still between two panes of glass. Reaching forward when you find your Triangle, express it. Nice and strong. Beautiful work, everyone.
Back leg is, extend, is straight, kneecap, thigh engaged. Front leg is straight, looking forward, up, down, whatever feels good. Into our half moon on the other side here. So right hand on the hip, bend the front knee. Reach forward with the pinkies. A little bit of a hop step into your half moon. Flexed foot, extended leg, right hand up. Looking down is the less, least challenging. Looking forward, looking up, increases the challenge. It's up to you. Nice work. From here, right hand down to the earth, standing splits. Right leg to the sky. Drop that right hip so you're square to the earth, but lift that leg. Feel the stretch up the back of that left leg, holding all the weight there. Crossing knee behind knee, bend the left knee, squat. Stand, kick the right leg up. Two, squat, kick up. Three, squat, kick up. Coming back to our half moon, so we're opening that hip to the side. Extend the leg, flex the foot. Carefully bend the front knee. Step back to your warrior two. Windmill down, step back, down dog. Let's drop our knees to the earth. Cross your ankles, sit back on your seat. Extend the legs in front of us, hips behind you, uh, flesh behind you is what I mean, your butt. Pelvis is rotated forward, flexed feet. Let's see what a forward fold feels like. Nice. Just hold out here for a moment. Take some breaths. Beautiful. Gentle opening to the back of the body. From here I want to come into a pigeon, so it's a gentle, more gentle way to get into a pigeon. Swing your left foot behind you, bend the front knee, come up forward. Get that knee forward, place your front leg as you like. No need to really pull that foot to make it parallel with the front of the mat. We don't want to torque our knee. Get that left knee back as far as you find your extension. First set yourself up into a nice, up on fingertips, a nice squared shoulder, squared hips. And then just slowly settle down into your forward pigeon. Arms come down, they come onto blocks. Whatever works for you. And take a couple of breaths. When you're ready, inhale, placing the hands under the shoulders, pushing yourself up. To come out of this, you can just drop the right hip down to the earth. Swing the left leg forward. Rock your weight to the left. Swing your right foot back behind you. Set up the other side. So at some point, you bring your weight up. Turn that left knee under in the back. Set the right foot or left foot in the front. Drop the right hip down, pull that right knee back, set yourself up so that you're squared. You know how to go into pigeon, you know what it feels like. It's so glorious after a lot of hip work. And exhale down, bowing forward. Cooling off here, slowing down from a job well done. And all these warm muscles, ligaments, tendons, tissue, fascia, then we can go into these deeper stretches and really get the benefit of our practice. I love it.
Don't forget to breathe. Big deep exhales often send you to a deeper stretch. When you're ready, bringing the hands under the shoulders, I'm going to come out of this separate, differently this time. Swing your weight back and bring your right or left foot back. Shake it out a little. I'm going to go right into cow's face. So I'll do it at a diagonal here. So from all, from all fours, let's take that right leg back. Tuck the right knee behind your left knee and sit back. So you're stacking your knees for cow's face. You know how this works. Drop your left hip down. I'm mirroring you now. I mean, yeah. No, I'm not mirroring you. I'm calling it as I'm doing it. So you're dropping your left foot down, left knees on top. Right hand up. Bend it down, left hand comes up to grab the elbow. Sitting up nice and straight. Let's take the left hand to the side. Thumb down, reach behind you. Maybe you grab the fingertips, maybe not. Maybe you just grab your shirt. Sitting up nice and straight. <clears throat> Some schools have you bending forward. If you'd like to do that, feel free. Mostly you're just trying to release stress and tension so your hips really open up. If you're forward, come back up. Everyone release their hands. Shake it out. Let's roll forward. Unwrap. Knee side by side. Left leg comes back. Left knee comes back. Tuck it behind the right as you crossed over. And then sit back. If you have to pull that heel out from under your hip to get your hip down, do so. Dropping that right hip down, left hand up, left elbow bent, pull that elbow across. When you're ready to take your right hand out, reach behind, see if you can grab over here. Maybe you did one side, not the other. Maybe both, but don't beat yourself up for anything. That's practicing ahimsa, nonviolence. Nonviolence to others, but also nonviolence to yourself. Don't judge yourself. Don't put yourself down. Patanjali felt, this is like one of the first doctrines in the limbs of yoga. He felt that if you beat yourself up, if you don't respect yourself, if you don't love yourself, how can you get, go further and forward in your yoga practice? If you're tipping forward, feel free. So accepting yourself, not judging yourself, not comparing yourself to others, being the divine that you are. No one else is you and you aren't anyone else. Once you own yourself, once you own and respect yourself, then you can further your yoga practice with your strength and flexibility, concentration, sitting back up if you're curled over. Let's release the hands gently. Oh, shake your shoulders out. And let's come to lying on your back. Legs extended at first. Moving slowly, quickly, however you think, into Shavasana. But we'll do a few other things here as we cool down. Pull the knees into the chest. One hand on each kneecap. Knees close and rock side to side. Let's place our feet on the earth for bridge. Hands down, palms down, inhale your hips up. You know how this works, nice and high. What a beautiful counter stretch to that pigeon, to the stacked logs, to the bending forward. What a beautiful counter stretch. Slowly roll your back down one vertebrae at a time. One more time, hips up. Slowly roll down one vertebrae at a time. Mm -hmm. Third time, let's have our hips up. Interlace your fingers behind your back. Walking your shoulder blades close together. Pull your fists 
towards your heels, which rolls your chest open more. Hips are nice and high. If you can get the heels of your hands under your low back, maybe you come up on your tippy toes for that. You can get a nice passive wheel, assisted wheel here. Maybe you have a full wheel in your practice, in which case you bring your hips down. So continue with your bridge, your assisted wheel, or take your wheel if you like, hands by your ears. If you're in your wheel, tuck your chin, back of the head down, pull the knees into the chest. Everybody, let's pull the knees into the chest nice and high. Once they're placed nice and high, we're going into a twist here, so drop the knees off to the right, all the way nice and high. Maybe you crawl that right shoulder forward, or to the right, rather. Left hand out like a T. Turn your head to the left. Relax. Maybe the right hand comes on the outside of that top knee for a little added weight and strength, or stretch rather. Breathe, slow your breath down. Take that quick response and match it with a slow response with control. Part of our yoga practice is coming to a calm after a speedy or stressful or strenuous routine. So you can bring that into your daily life. You find yourself under stress. You have the tool now, the ability to calm yourself. Take a deep breath, a couple, <laughs> count to ten, and you'll be surprised how you react better in stressful circumstances when you're being challenged or threatened. Let's bring the knees up to center. Square yourself on the mat. Knees into the chest nice and high. Then drop your knees off to the left. Crawl that left shoulder to the left a little maybe. Right hand out. Like a T, chin to the right to get the cerebral spine involved. And exhale. Part of taking our yoga practice off the mat and into the world is having these tools, having these abilities to control our breath. Oftentimes we want to act with emotion, which oftentimes gets us in trouble and regret. So if you can control your emotions, take your emotions out of the equation, bring your brain into play, practice your skills of breath control, of calm, you might act very differently. Let's inhale our knees up to the sky, everybody. One more last rock and roll, knees nice and high, keeping that low back all the love. And then let's extend our legs straight out on the earth. Let your feet fall open to each side, hands at your side. Bring your pinkies right against the edges of your thighs so your arms are very close to your body. And think about how high your shoulders are. Now slowly slide the backs of your hands away from your body and see what happens to your shoulders. When you get out maybe wider than you normally do, your shoulders completely relax on the earth. A lot of people's hands are very close to their body for Shavasana, which doesn't give the shoulders the complete release. And maybe that's you. Maybe you bring your hands a little further away from your body than you're used to. Take up some space and try and feel those shoulder blades more fully on the earth. And we take our Shavasana. Sink in, settle in, much earned. Relax your forehead. Your eyes are soft, your cheeks are soft, your lips are soft. Road is open and gentle. Chest is open, belly is soft. Knees have fallen to the side, feet have fallen to the side. And just lie here. 
breathing natural, naturally in and out of the mouth, in and out of the nose, whatever feels comfortable. Eyes, of course, are closed. Take your energy to your third eye. Focus on your breath and letting go. You're welcome to stay in your Shavasana for a few more minutes if you like. Take your time, pause the video. But I'll lead the rest out of Shavasana. Take your time and begin to slowly breathe more consciously, more deeply. With big exhales, let's take our hands up over our heads, long up over our heads, bring the legs together, reach really long, really tall, make the left side of the body long, the right side, wiggling your toes and fingers, circling your wrists and ankles, and on your exhale, pull the knees into your chest, and let's roll off to the right hand side, honoring the feminine, the intuitive, the creative, lying on your side in that fetal position that's just so familiar to our DNA. And when you're ready to sit yourself up, push yourself up rather into a seated position, sitting up nice and tall with the flat back, shoulder blades relaxed down the spine, long neck, close your eyes. And truly, truly take a moment to thank yourself for bringing yourself to this challenging class, to bringing yourself to the mat for you, for others, to further your yoga practice. Like I said before, your advanced practice begins. Your really advanced practice is in the world when you take your yoga off the mat, practicing your strength and balance and concentration and flexibility, of course, in your daily life. I'm teaching outdoors. And I like to close with this when I'm teaching outdoors. And after all these years, the sun never said to the earth, you owe me. Think of what can be done with a love like that. It can light up the entire sky. So take your love light and bring it out into the world and shine like the sun. Let's inhale our hands out to the side, looking up, reaching up, hands in prayer position above us. Hands down to the forehead. May you always know your truth. Hands to your throat chakra. May you always speak your truth. And hands to your heart. May you always live your truth. Thanks for joining today, everyone.
Namaste.